you ever considered fighting the forces of evil? <gasps> Monsters are coming. I think you've got what it takes. Don't listen to him. You're going to be amazing. Get ready for battle, Commander. Let's get to work. Welcome everyone. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding how to get through the first part of Fortnite Save the World, so you will know how to unlock your daily quest and get your 1000 V-Bucks. You'll also be able to see why I think this is one of the best heroes you can start the game with. Before we get started, here's a really quick Bible verse. Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. This means that God has an amazing plan for your life, and it's beyond anything you could ask or imagine. Fortnite is just a game. It isn't real. The devil would have you to believe he isn't real. He will tell you things like your life doesn't matter, like you're worthless. He will tell you things like you aren't important. The devil is a liar. You are important. The Bible says the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God loves you very much and sent his only son Jesus to die on a cross so that you might be saved. If you want to know more about someone who really did save the world and who loves you and wants to turn your life around and will do it for you, all you have to do is ask. You can find out more in the description of this video below. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. As soon as you launch Fortnite Save the World, you are greeted with a video. For time purposes, I'll be cutting most of this video and some of the gameplay. But you will want to make sure you see that in game. It's also a good idea to make sure you have your sound working before you launch it. start out in a mine and we have to build our way out. Once out we have to gather materials so we can craft a better weapon. Whoa. Has it always been this bad, Ramirez? Nah, sometimes it's worse. Excellent building. You're gonna need a bigger gun. A much bigger gun. We can help with Before that. Before we craft this, this field up here will block us out until we craft it. Also best to do this part first and then explore. Ramirez, come in. We got company. I've marked the location of the fort on your map. Let's go protect those survivors. Hurry up out there, Ramirez. Take out those huts. It's best to only put down three traps and save the others for later. Those traps should buy us some time. Let's see how those survivors are holding up. It's best to search everything in here. Once you get to this chest, there's an Easter egg behind this wall. Here we just need to edit the door. Once we make it downstairs, we don't want to launch the rocket just yet. 
Instead, we want to head back outside and come back in here after we have explored. It's a good idea to search everything down here while you're down here and to bust up all these server racks so you're getting mechanical parts and nuts and bolts. You can say hi to the survivors while you're there too. I'm sure they won't mind. There's usually an ammo box down here. Good idea to grab that. Especially when you're starting out. Alright, then if we head back up these stairs. I want to ramp up here. There's a chest up here usually. An ammo box. Once you grab the chest, you want to head over here, and you can see these garden gnomes walking the plank. One of them's already in the ground. If you beat on these garden gnomes with your pickaxe, you have a chance of getting active power cells. Like that. And you need active power cells to be able to craft legendary weapons. Then we want to ramp up here, and we want to head over to the bacon farm. That's the field that looks like this, and I'd highly recommend you grab all this bacon. It'll be very useful later on for making gas traps and defender pads. It's a good idea to loot all this stuff. There's also an Easter egg down here. There's two garden gnomes, and this time you don't want to bust these up. You can walk over here and take a look at them. You want to walk back out, and then you'll hear them laugh if your volume's up. And even if you don't, you want to walk back down, and you'll see what's going on about to blow themselves up so if you go over there and you'll see it happen now if you did this first the ones walking the plank will not be there and then once you've looted everything you want to come back over to the fort and bust up this doghouse so that way you can get the bacon and after you get the bacon you want to head inside and launch the rocket and then come back outside Now you can let these traps do the work for you, and these turrets. And you can take out lobbers and things like that, or some husks that get real close to you. But you can pretty much let these traps and turrets do the work for you. And then once this is done, the rocket will blast off, and you'll be back at home base. And we want to launch our storm shield defense. And I'd highly recommend you go ahead and build this out of metal, all metal, so that way you don't have to fool with it later. Let's start with walls. You have wood, stone, and metal. Then once you've built this to their specification, you can get ready to activate it. If you notice that you cannot build after you've built it their way, it will not let you build anything else, any additional pieces, until you actually start the storm shield. But you don't want to do that too much, because you'll lose the materials as soon as you come back in. They'll be gone. And I'd also recommend editing this. What that does, it allows the pitcher, the, it'll make the pitcher want to come over to you, and if that wall's not there, he'll try to get an angle on you and stand off to the side throwing it at you. Whereas with that wall there, he will walk straight through, or try to walk straight through, and get hit by the traps, or you at the end of it. And one of the first things I'd recommend doing once you get done with this Storm Shield defense, is changing your hero to the new hero. That hero should help you out a lot. And then one of the things I would also recommend doing, is setting your settings to private, for this mission. If you want to play on public all the time, that's no, no worries, you should. But on this particular mission, I would kind of recommend you to do it solo, because there's going to be things that's going to be rushed if you do it in public and you will miss out on some things like with the story and things like that because you only get to see this one time when you're doing the game. So it's a good idea to go in private. Good thing to do is go ahead and get in the zone. To get in the zone, use your pickaxe and bust up something. 
until you start sparkling. What that does is allows you to see hidden chests and things through walls. Like if we go over to this house, you'll see these hidden chests. There's two hidden chests. Also, if you switch weapons, you won't be in the zone anymore. It's a good idea to go through here and get all these chests. Oh, there's some husk in there too. After you take them out, you can grab the chest. Well, they really don't like that chest, do they? Get lost. This is your anti-material charge, and if you're not close enough, you won't be able to get the whole car. You'll have to pickaxe it a little bit. Like if I go up to this car, and I'm close enough, it'll bust it up one time. To do this, you have to have your pickaxe out, and then you have to hit the left trigger or your heavy attack. It sure beats doing this all the time with the other heroes. And this is where your Outlander really shines. Outlanders are great at rescuing survivors. So when you get to the survivor that's sitting on top of the car, you want to place your teddy. If you look at the bottom right of your screen at the picture of the teddy, it will show you which buttons you need to push to place your teddy. You can use weapons here if you want to as well. Just remember, it's a good idea to get back in the zone after doing so, so you'll be able to see hidden chests. You can also use your anti-material charge to punch us and your pickaxe as long as the car doesn't get destroyed, the survivor is safe. you talk to the survivor there is a garden on behind the house to the north there's also a dog house there where you can bust that up and get the bacon this house also usually has chests in it and it's also a good idea to loot fireplaces so you can get the coal as well these are charge fragments charge fragments reduce the cooldown of your teddy so it will come back faster. This will also give you charge fragments, but it's also a loot llama. And you use your pickaxe to bust it up. It will give you building materials and crafting materials. Outlanders are the only class of hero that can actually open these. Once you've looted everything, it's time to head to this house or the white exclamation mark on your map and go in. This does not inspire content. Let's see what's inside. There is a hidden door behind here. And this inspires even less confidence. Once you get down to the bottom, it will ask you to craft bullets. You only need to hit this three times. Then we want to head to the objective. According to the lab's computers, you place the atlas on the target, add blue glow, and wait. Sounds simple. It's a good idea if you see these charge fragments laying around to grab them, so that way your teddy will have less cooldown and come back faster. Now we can place the atlas. You can build this out of wood. You want an outer wall all the way around the atlas like this. You can edit what you've built to add windows, doors, or to change the overall design. When you're in the build menu, you can also place traps. If your structure takes damage, you can repair it using the same resource. We want to try and control where the husks are going to attack. So they're not all spread out everywhere. We want to put a floor all around so we can edit it. Husks will usually go for the weakest point because it's easier for them. But we want to edit the floor so there's an extra barrier that they will have to get through. Like this, all the way around. We want to leave the middle open like this towards the west. So all the husk will want to come here. You could put a ceiling above this area too as well and put traps there. Us will come from the middle here and the sides. So we will.
will place four spikes here to slow them down. We also need to put a door, but we don't want to put it in the front or the sides. That makes the wall weaker, and therefore it can aggro the husk to go there. So we want to put the door in the back. We want to put wall spikes here, and the lower level ones will work just fine. We also want to put floor spikes here. You could use these steel and electric traps here, but since we can't craft those, we will save those back for later. You can only craft the traps that you have on the left hand side. This trap down here is only good for doing a lot of damage to a single husk, and is not as effective as a seal and electric trap that will take out multiple husks. You could also put wall darts here, and you could put retractable floor spikes here, but we will save those back. We will stand here during the attack to give the husk more incentive to come here, and kill the husks that make it here. Now we just need to put a seal in. Nice work. Add blue glow to the atlas. Open mission control when you're ready to begin. And now we're ready to activate the atlas. That's enough blue glow. Here come the husks. And there goes the core temperature. We will go ahead and put a floor spike here. Uh, no need to worry. Yet. You can see the husk wanted to go the other way, but because we were there and it was easier, the husk decided to go this way. Don't forget you can also use your teddy here. Once you have finished this mission, you will end up back at the home screen, and you can see on the quest page where you're at. You will want to make it to the third page and complete the third storm shield. This will unlock Road Trip and the Pirate Event, and if you happen to be watching this video at another time, it'll unlock whatever event you're in at that time. I will be showing how you can also solo these missions in an upcoming video. Plus this will unlock your daily quest so you can get your 1000 V-Bucks. In the meantime, here's some of the other cool things your new hero can do. Not only can you see hidden chests and safes, plus you have a teddy. You also have Seismic Smash, which isn't unlocked until you level her up. It comes in really handy. You also have face shift, which you can do backwards to get away from husk. And there is always punching husk in the face. You can also jump over things and jump off of heights like buildings. If you time it right, you will not die. Let's not forget getting out of the way of a charging smasher. I want to let you guys know about the headset that I'm using. Being able to hear where the enemies are coming from, whether it's behind you or in front of you or beside you, makes a big difference. I'm including a link to this in the description of the video so you guys can check it out. This is my Amazon affiliate link, so if you decide to purchase it or something else from this link, I will get a small commission and it will help support the channel. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure and hit that like button. Also, be sure and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. So that way you can be notified when future Fortnite videos come out. Until next time, God bless.